Hey team, this is going to be another video guide to some of the maps on Dead by Daylight. Today we have a set of maps that could be considered some of the default simple maps in the game. None of the tiles here are particularly strange, so you should be able to find them on other maps, which also means you will be able to use the knowledge you learn here to better understand most other maps. The Autohaven Wreckers is a catalog of five maps, Azarov's Resting Place, Blood Lodge, Gas Heaven, Wreckers Yard, and Wretched Shop. These maps came to the game upon release along and are part of the Wraith's lore. Naturally, judging by their name, they are junkyard styled maps with car parts and junk related tiles. So we will quickly go over the basic maze tiles you will find on each of these maps before going deeper into each map's intricacies. First on the list of maze tiles we have the LT wall. This has two parallel walls like so with an T wall with a window in it and an L wall with a window in it. It also has this little extra bit where there is a locker, but that's fine. Before we go forward, I want to say that this is a 50 50 tile. No matter what decision you make when going around this tile, it's almost always going to result in a coin flip whether or not you get hit. So keep that in mind going forward. You want to use this as a transition tile in going through the window or whatnot, getting hit, and then going on to a safer place. Now, when you run this tile, you almost always want to run it clockwise. So if the clock is this way, you want to run it clockwise. You can go through the window, run around clockwise, run through the window. However, the killer is n almost never going to let you do that. So. We want to think about how to run it counterclockwise in order to get the most out of this tile. So if you're running it counterclockwise on the T-wall, the safer of the two tiles, you run it this way. Now, think about this corner as your sort of hub, right? This fern. When the killer is about there, you want to make a decision. You either go through the window while they're following you, or you come around, you fake going through the window, and then you go around this way and run through that window. Whatever decision you make, you always want to commit to it because if you you go through the window and the killer meets you on the other side, you're gonna take a hit. But if you go through there and hesitate, the killer might realize that you didn't vault the window by either a sound notification or just realizing it and he'll just come around and hit you. So you always want to commit to that window or coming around to this one and it's the same thing with this L wall you come around this way go around this is your hub he, he comes around the corner and you either commit to this window or commit to this window like I said this is always a 50 50 so make sure you make your decision and move on with it if you take a hit that's fine run away from this tile and onto something better that has a pallet, either maybe a jungle gym or a junk tile like over there. Next we have the four wall maze tile. This tile is widely considered very weak. It has a pallet. Sometimes this wall can be completed, but oftentimes it has an opening. And then it has two more over here with a window on a long wall and another wall here. Uh, for beginner and intermediate players, I would always suggest that you either throw the pallet for a stun or use the long wall to just get away and run to another tile. You're never going to be in a good position to use this tile to its fullest and much less recognize which variation is even usable for any length of time. So just Keep away from this tile if you can help it, use it to supplement your routing, and then just move on to something like even a junk tile like a truck or the killer shack. Jungle gyms. There are two variations of the jungle gym. One with a long wall like this one with the vault in the middle of a very long wall, and one with an L wall next to this wall right here, and that opening is where the vault is. The only difference between the two is obviously where the vault is and the pallet is on the other side. Now, the common trait between these two gyms is this 
sort of triangle area right here where you can think of it as the triangle that you want to orient yourself there's always a locker here so look for that the idea is you want to run this clockwise you always want to go around it clockwise if possible that way you have easy access to this loop or when you go around because the vault is right there you can simply vault through there either go around or around I'll show you that in detail in just a moment you usually want to use this window as much as possible running around this way as often as possible and then once the killer has bloodlust or gets too close due to a mistake or whatnot you can then throw the pallet this is the second variation of the gym as you can see you have a vault here this is the triangle here's where the pallet is there it is always keep that triangle in mind this is where the other vault would be and then your pallet don't hesitate to throw this pallet if you're in danger. I know that this gym is very strong in general, but if you're going to take a hit, it's better to just use the pallet than leave it for someone else who might misuse it as equally. The easiest way to run a jungle gym like this is find this corner of your triangle and position your camera like so, so that you can see that way and this way. So once you see the red glow, you can start moving one way or the other. If it comes out that way, you can run through the window. If it comes out that way, you can begin moving this way. Now, what is what do you do if the killer starts running you counterclockwise as you should? Now, here, you just wanna run around the triangle, very simple. You can continue to run around this triangle as often as possible, as often as you need to, and either throw the pallet, or if it's this particular L-shaped wall, you should be able to jump through the, the vault like so. You can come around, take it a little wide, and then just jump through it fast vault style. Now the strength of the long wall is once you go through the long wall, you can see through the window which way the killer is going to go. If he comes around that way, you get to continue going clockwise and ruin the killer's day. However, you go through this and you go through and you see the killer going around clockwise, you can generally get enough time to just jump through this again, just like that. It's as easy as taking it wide going on it straight on and hopping through until he goes around it the wrong way and then you get to take it around again that's how you run the jungle gym and lastly you have the L walls this tile is quite interesting as I think all the variations are a little bit different uh, I think a totem can spawn and maybe a generator right here but otherwise it's a pretty unremarkable tile um, this is a really weak tile. You can use it to some effect in that once it's thrown, it's actually a little bit stronger than if it's not thrown because you can go around and you have lots of vision. But otherwise, there's no real reason to conserve this tile. You just throw the pallet and vault over it or whatever you have to do. Get your stun and move on to something like a jungle gym. You don't need to save this tile for any reason. Now we've got landmarks. Landmarks are going to be larger structures like this large magnet grabber thingy. Uh, and they will always be in the same places on each map. There are three different variations and I'll just go over them quickly. This one is the grabby thingy. I don't really know what it's called. Think of it as two squares though. This one and this one. Right? The easiest way to run this would be to go around and around counterclockwise so that if you want you can slip up here and jump through this window. However, it is just as equally good to run around this way and simply 
loop the smaller side in eventually dropping that pallet and that's fine another tip that you can do is if you tilt your camera up you can see right through where the tire tracks are tilt your camera up a little bit and you can see the red glow through there and you'll know exactly where the killer is so keep that in mind if you ever come up against this tile next you have the tanker this destroyed corpse of a vehicle it always has this car here to make it a bit wider there's really nothing special about this tile it's pretty bad it has a vault here that you can't even fast fault if you wanted to and it drops down which means if the killer ends up meeting you on the other side you can't even go back up you can try and do something with like balanced landing or live through this window if you really really had to but unless you really can't do anything else just ignore this entirely it's garbage just stay away this bus landmark can spawn in two different variations one with the window vault right here and one with the window vault right here the better of the two buses is with the window vault in the middle sim it will make it into a long wall which is always universally strong you can simply go through it go around either this way which will allow you to jump through or even go through this way it doesn't matter they both give you opportunity to fast fault through and whenever you're in trouble you can simply throw the pallet and there you go if you get the bad variation simply go through here it you'll drop down and you'll drop down right here and you'll just go through here where the pallet is and go around and you can go through again it's really as simple as that the killer can meet you on the other side but honestly he'll probably just follow you if he doesn't you can fake it if not just vault through it once and go off to better and brighter things on every auto haven wreckers map and also any map that is outside there is a killer shack as it is called colloquially this map can have the basement and it always spawns a very very strong pallet here and a window right here that is akin to a long wall this tile is very complex and i'm not going to go into it in this video but i will make a video at a later time going over just how to run this as well as you possibly can so stay tuned for that now with all that finished let's just go over the maps and what they look like and their shapes and what's contained in them very quickly azarov's resting place this map is shaped like a dumbbell with notable buildings on each side one being the killer shack and the other being what i think is an administration building it's a very small building with lots of windows the, the basement can spawn in both locations the middle of the map is full of default maze tiles those being lt walls four walls jungle gyms and small l walls this means the map has lots of rng if lots of l walls spawn you could have a pretty bad time but if LT walls and jungle gyms spawn in succession, you can find some, find some very broken and safe areas. The ends of the dumbbell each have one spot that a default maze tile can spawn and a larger landmark spawn. These landmark spawns are either the bus, the tanker, or the magnet grabber thingy. There are also a random assortment of junk tiles that can spawn all around the building and the landmarks. The junk slash rock tiles are simple pallets. They're typically safe, but the best idea is to run around the largest object next to the pallet until the killer gets close. Keep the object that you're running around between you and the killer as often as possible. Once the killer gets too close for comfort, without letting them hit you, drop the pallet. Once the pallet is down, you'll run a run around the tile until the killer breaks it. At this point, run as far away as you can. If you run too early, you might end up letting the killer get too close, which will result in a hit. All in all, a map that can easily spawn in your favor, but also very much against you. Personally, when I'm playing Survivor, I don't like to see this map, due to the restrained middle of the map. However, a more stealthy playstyle might benefit from this better than mine. Blood Lodge. This is a very large, very wide open map. 
On each side, there's a building. On one side is a shack, and the other is the lodge itself. Both buildings can contain the basement. The lodge contains a window in the downstairs and an upper floor. There's nothing really special about this lodge, as the window isn't especially safe. The upper floor can be used for something like a balanced landing, but otherwise there's nothing really to note here. In the middle of the map, between the two buildings, is, is essentially a huge mess of junk tiles. Some spawn with pallets, some don't. This leads to a bit of instability in the map's safety, but on average, this map spawns a large number of pallets in the middle. Along with the outside of the map is where the maze tiles spawn. They're reasonably close together, but they aren't as close as Azeroth's, which means they aren't nearly as safe. The landmark spawns are in the same spot each time, on the lodge side of the map, but sort of where the junk spawns and the maze spawns come together, as a sort of transition. Blood Lodge is technically an extremely strong map for a survivor. There's a huge number of medium to strong pallets to be found just about everywhere, so it's difficult to be out of position. I personally don't really like this map because it's huge, but there are quite a few survivors that favor it. You should be pretty happy when you find this map. Gas Heaven. This map is moderate size, with a notable main building and lots of cars piled up everywhere. The basement can spawn either in the gas station itself or in the killer shack. The gas station has two windows open at all times, and sometimes it has its back door open as well. The garage always contains a generator and a pallet. The pallet in the garage is strange. It's strong, but when it's dropped, it's only truly safe when the garage door is open. And the garage door is only open when the generator in there is finished. The map is a mix of maze tiles and junk spawns. Generally, they spawn close enough to be safe, but sometimes the, the junk spawns can come up as dead zones. That's really the only time this map can be bad for survivors. There's also a single landmark spawn in this map. It's directly next to the killer shack, which could spawn something incredible. Or it could be the tanker, which is terrible. The notable portion of this map is the walls of cars. If you get a head start around these and the killer actually chases you, just running around these can waste tons of the killer's time. Not to mention, usually carry them away from the rest of the team, meaning they'll have to waste even more time trying to get back to protect their generators. I think Gas Heaven is the most deceptively strong survivor sided map in the game. Deceptive because if it spawns poorly, it can be awful. But even if it does, and the survivors know what they're doing, they can still easily win. Wrecker's Yard. Wrecker's Yard is completely unremarkable. It used to be rather large, but it got changed to be much smaller. Now it's just tile after tile of either junk or maze tiles. That's it. There is no main building, no special spawns. The only thing about this map is that it is notable that the killer shack is always in the very center of the map, which means the basement is always in the center of the map and thus accessible by the killer. This means killers like Trapper or Huntress or just about any other killer with extremely strong basement games have a much easier time here. I'd say on average this map is pretty balanced for both sides. Um, Lots of windows, lots of pallets, not too bad to play with either. Wretched Shop. This map has a huge main building. This main building has a single open window and multiple open doors. It always has at least one pallet on the outside, which is almost universally weak, but still useful. The strength of this building is simply taking the killer around the outside, Use the pallets like a Hawkins pallet, throwing it early so you can keep going, causing the killer to have to run around it to follow you. If they have to go around it, their trip is longer, but yours is just as short. If they break it, you can run off to the other side of the map. There are some areas that spawn mostly trees between the shop and the killer shack, which is odd, but otherwise this is just a map that ties junk tiles together with maze tiles like Wrecker's Yard. The shop used to be much stronger, but they fixed it. The map can be very agonizing to the killer if they take bad chases around the shop itself, but if they're smart, they can use the map to their advantage since you can cross through most areas quickly. And that is it for the video. I hope everything here was helpful to you and allows you to run the killer around more often. If you enjoyed this, be sure to visit in the future as there will be more videos going over other maps and their particularities. 
Comment down below if there are any inaccuracies, give me a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks everyone, see you in the next one.